Hi, welcome to this workshop where we're going to be looking at how we draw a basic t-shirt. Now this workshop is recommended for anyone new to drawing fashion flats and it covers many of the fundamental skills that reoccur in all flat drawings including um, using the pen tool, creating curves, using the reflection tool and we're also going to be creating um, basic stitch lines as well as using offset paths. Um, and we're going to be looking at how we can create the thicker outlines which make our drawings look finished. Now in order for us to be able to work alongside each other um, successfully it's a good idea if we have our workspace set up in the same way. Now I'm using Essentials Classic as a workspace so it'd be a good idea if you switched yours um, uh, to the same as mine. So if you go to Window, choose Workspace and choose Essentials Classic. Now I'm going to reset mine because I've changed a few things. Okay, so you can see here that I've got my Properties and my Libraries panels open. Now I don't really need those open um, for this exercise, so I'm just going to drag these out here and shut them down. Okay, it gives me a bit more space as well because I've expanded my screen a little bit so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Um, now that's meant that I've had to kind of double up or fold up my um, my tool panel here so you can make yours look the same as mine. Yours might look like this in a single line. Obviously mine now extends down below um, the extent of my screen um, but if I double that up I can fit all my um, my tools in. That also works really well if you're working on a smaller screen size um, or a laptop. Um, over here I've got um, some panels open. Um, we're not going to use all of these um, and we're going to open up one or two that aren't already open but this is what they look like here. Um, if you prefer um, you can always um, expand the panels so all these little symbols down here if I, if I click if I show you this one, this one's colour. If I click here, you can see this is what they look like when they're expanded, um, which is fine if you've got plenty of space. Um, but because of how I'm um, uh, recording this, um, I just want mine to be little symbols. If you're unsure what things are, don't worry too much. You can hover over any of these and um, Illustrator will reveal its name to you. Okay, so you can just hover over each one. Same with the tools. If you're not sure what um, a tool is, you can just hover over it and it will show you its name. Across the top here, this will change um, as we work through our exercise, depending on what we're doing at any given time. I've also got this um, uh, mannequin template open. This is one that I've created for myself. If you're one of my students from the University of Manchester you'll be able to find this on Blackboard. Um, if not, if you have a little rummage around on the internet I'm sure you'll be able to find something similar that you'll be able to use um, for um, the benefit of keeping up. Now um, I do recommend that you always use a mannequin um, template when you're drawing a flat. It keeps everything in proportion. Um, it means that your drawings are always um, consistent in size, which means that things like your um, stroke weights and things are always in proportion. Um, so that's why we always use these templates. There's one other thing that I need to set up for you, um, or actually I've already set up, but I just need to point out to you um, why my um, points when we start drawing look like this. I've made them very large. That's so you can see um, exactly what's going on. If you are a complete novice and you're brand new to using Illustrator, you might want to um, change how these anchor points look. Okay, It just makes things a little bit easier when we're learning. So if we go to Illustrator and choose Preferences and choose Selection and Anchor Display and then there's a little slide here and um, the default size is really quite tiny um, and I've maxed mine out. Um, you don't have to max yours out, you can take it 
um, a, a little bit smaller if you like, or you can come up to the maximum like me. Um, I, I've done this so these handles show up really, really clearly on, on video. I've also changed my handle style so they're kind of solid. So again, you might just want to emulate exactly what I'm doing and then you're not wondering why yours looks different to mine. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and that's why my handles look so gigantic. OK, now I'm going to just zoom in on the, um, the torso of my mannequin because we're drawing a t-shirt. This is the only bit that I'm really interested in. And we're going to um, start off um, by drawing um, a path. Now I'm going to start here. Now I've got this tool, this is the pen tool. Um, if you hover over it, you'll also notice that it's got its name and it's also got a letter in brackets. Now, most of these tools have the same thing. Um, that letter is the keyboard shortcut. And assuming you're not using um, type, um, if you type that letter, so for example, if I hit the letter T on my keyboard now, it will um, switch to the type tool and you can see it has done. If I hit P, it will go back to the pen tool. Now you don't need to learn all these um, straight off the bat. You can pick them up at your own pace. Um, so we're going to start off with a pen tool and um, I'm using um, these, this kind of cross cursor. This is a preference. Again, if you want to change it, you can do. So this gives us a, a kind of a bit more precise control because I know exactly where I click and um, the centre of that um, that cross is going to be where my cursor is going to drop. Um, but that's my preference. So I've put my first anchor, okay, which looks like this, it looks like a blue, um, a solid blue square. Now the reason it's a blue square is because the layer colour that I'm using is, a, is blue. I'll show you that in just a second. I'm now going to just click on the low shoulder point here and then I'm going to come into this point here. Um, you can see there's this kind of curved line uh, where the armhole goes and then I've got this solid green line down here. I'm going to just click where those two things intersect like so. So that's my third point and I'm going to just come and click under the arm here. Um, so I've just clicked there, that's my fourth point. And then I'm going to come down to where I want my, uh, my t-shirt hem to be. So that's going to be my fifth point. Now to stop drawing, because you'll see um, we've kind of got this elastic band type thing. Um, now to stop drawing, if I hit the return key on my keyboard, um, or you can hit enter if you've got a number pad, return and enter are not the same thing. Um, but they, in this instance, they do do the same job. So I'm just going to hit return. And you can see now that my, um, my pen tool is no longer drawing. Okay. Now, all these little uh, line segments that I've created, so each, um, each bit of line in between two anchor points is called a line segment. The whole thing is called a path. Okay. And these are our anchors. Okay, so we've got five anchor points and we've got one, two, three, four line segments making up a complete path. Now I can convert these to um, curves um, in a second, but I'm just going to show you um, something else um, before we, we go too much further. I'm just going to deselect this line and I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see what's going on on this corner. So I've zoomed in quite a long way there and you can see this very sharp line, um, this little mitered corner on our path. Now in some kinds of drawings um, those mitres are really useful but when we're drawing garments um, they're less so. So we're going to um, change this but I'm not just going to change it for this one path I'm going to change it um, as, as my default I'm going to actually alter the default so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the stroke panel 
and you can see here at the moment it just shows me the line weight now I, I need to see more information than that so if I go to this little um, set of three lines here I can choose something called show options and it gives me a lot more um, in my stroke panel and you can see here that I've got something called a cap and a corner and I can change these to be rounded so I can have a round cap and a round join for my corners instead of these mitre joins. Now this is much easier to deal with when we're, we're drawing garments. Um, some of those mitres um, they, they turn into like little, little stilettos almost, um, they become so sharp. So that's why I've rounded those off. Now um, I'm quite happy with that so I can just tap stroke and it will close that stroke panel. And now I want to make that into my default graphic style. Now here um, we have this little panel here and if I hover over it you can see it's called graphic style so I'm just going to click on that. This is the graphic style that I'm currently using at the moment. Okay. Or I can make a new one. Okay, so this is this is the one that I've got selected. And then I can drag this up and drop it onto my default. Oops. So my default is now rounded. Okay, so I just dragged and dropped um, my new graphic style um, and dropped it onto my default. And this is my, um, my permanent default now. So um, that's going to make for much better drawings. And it just takes a little step out um, that we don't have to go through again. Now I'm going to um, just um, select my line, okay, again, but this time I'm using something called the direct selection tool. It's the, we've got this arrow here, which um, is, the, is sometimes referred to as the black arrow, and then we've got the white arrow. Neither of them are black or white. One's a very dark gray, and one's a very light gray, but hey. Um, so this is the direct selection tool. You can see the keyboard shortcut is the letter A. So I'm gonna choose that. And I'm just going to click on this anchor point in the armhole. Can you see where it says anchor? So I can just click there. And you can see that these anchor points are uh, white. We refer to them as being hollow and this is solid. Okay, so these are not selected. The hollow ones are not selected. Okay, but this one is. So this is the anchor point that we're going to affect. Now we can do that using the, the uh, direct selection tool. The selection tool, which is this one here, would select the whole thing. So if I click on that anchor point again, you can see it's actually picked up the whole path. All right, so that's why we're using the direct selection tool and that's the difference between them. Now we're going to switch tools now this tool lives with the pen tool, so you're going to have to click and hold your mouse button down um, and it will reveal all the tools that live with the pen tool. We've got the pen tool, something called add anchor point tool and the delete anchor point tool. And then this one here, which looks like a little inverted V, which is called the anchor point tool. Okay. And if I click on this and hold my mouse button down and then drag down and I'm kind of dragging um, in this kind of southwesterly direction, okay? So you can see I'm dragging down, not too far, and I've pulled out something called a handle, all right? Can you see how I've got these kind of little round balls on the end of um, these lines? This is called a handle, all right? So if I hover over it, you can see it says handle there and they are not lines, okay, they're not part of the drawing, but they control the curve. How long the handles are and the direction that they move in um, controls how this curve looks. So if I were to pick this handle up and pull it like this, you can see it changes how this handle behaves. Okay, I've just undone that. 
Okay, so I'll just drag those out again. So you can change your mind. So I can click on the anchor point and change my mind. So if it's not quite right, I can go over and over and over until I get it just right. Okay, now I could, if I wanted to, add some shape onto the waist of my t-shirt. Now I don't need a handle to do this. If you look at my cursor now, um, I've got a slightly different cursor because I'm not hovering over a handle. If I go back to the handle, you can see it looks like the inverted V. Yeah, but if I'm just on the path, I get this kind of um, black arrow and then um, a little symbol for a curved line. And that will tell you that it will add a little bit of a curve in there. So I can just add some shape and then I can um, manipulate the handle. So I could make this handle a little longer and pull this handle up a little bit. So we can change how this t-shirt looks. Okay, so I can give it more shape or less shape. Um, now that that's useful. Um, for example, if you were drawing um, maybe a cheaper t-shirt, it's less likely to have any kind of shaping. Um, so you wouldn't add those curves in necessarily, but if it was a more expensive um, t-shirt, it might be a little bit more tailored. So you can add this shape just by manipulating that path. Okay, now it's entirely up to you at this stage whether or not you um, keep that um, a, a straight line or not. Okay, and I can take the curve out um, as I see fit. Okay, so I could return it back to a straight line. Now I'm going to do that for now because this is a beginner's tutorial so um, I'm not going to make things overly complex. I even just re redraw that. There we go. All right so we've got a very very simple little path. I've got a solitary curve in there and I've taken the curves that I originally put in here. Um, out but it was just really to demonstrate um, how easy it is um, to achieve that. Okay so now what we're going to do is using the um, selection tool okay you can see that the keyboard shortcut is the letter V um, and I'm going to click on this path uh, and I've selected the entire thing and what we're going to do is we're going to use the reflect tool Okay, keyboard shortcut is the letter O. And I'm going to position my cursor on this center line. And if I hold down my Alt key or the Option key, depending on um, what kind of keyboard you've got, the Alt or Option key, um, you will see you get these kind of little dots coming um, after that cursor. Okay, so that's me without my finger on the Alt key. And that's me um, with my finger on the Alt key. Now I'm holding the Alt key down and I've got my cursor exactly lined up on that blue center line that goes through the middle of the mannequin. And I click. Now holding down the Alt key will call up this dialog box. Okay, and you can see it's the dialog box for the reflect tool. And you can see I can choose which axis that I'm going to reflect across. So I can use the horizontal or the vertical axis. Now I need it to um, reflect over the vertical axis. Um, so make sure you've got this little radio button checked. Um, you can preview that. Okay, so that's it in its original position and that's the preview of where it's going to go. Now if I were to just click OK, it would flip the, the line over and I'd still only have one line. But if I choose copy, um, we end up with two lines. So I've got my original and I've got my new reflected line over here. So I've now got two lines and I'm going to use the selection tool again and I'm going to hold down the shift key this time. Now holding down the shift key will allow me to select more than one object at a time. So I've got this path selected and now holding the shift key I can click on the original path and I've got both parts selected. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to just um, right click my mouse button. Oops. And I'm going to choose join. Okay, now it will join initially at the top of my drawing, but I also need it to be joined at the bottom, so I need to do that twice. So I'm going to right click and choose join again and then I can deselect and you can see the shape um, that I've got drawn now. Okay, so my simple little path has been reflected and the two parts have been joined at the neckline and at the hemline. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add some points in. So I need to add some shape at the neck and some shape at the hem. So to do this, I'm going to use the Add Anchor Point tool. And I'm going to just click on that centre line, the neckline, to add a new anchor point. And I'm going to do the same thing on the hemline. Now I'm going to use the direct selection tool and I'm going to select them one at a time, these new points, and I'm going to use my cursor keys on my keyboard. I'm going to use the down um, button um, just to nudge this point down a little. Now it's entirely up to you. You can go completely wild if you like and have it kind of plunging neckline um, or you can come up a little way um, or you could have it very shallow. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to come down to about here and I'm going to um, come down a little way on the hem. Not too far though, not nowhere near as, as deep as the neckline. And then I'm going to switch my tool again to the anchor point tool and I'm going to add a curve. Now I'm going to pull over to the right um, on the neckline to pull these handles out. Now these handles kind of wave around um, quite dramatically, um, but if you hold the shift key, you can constrain um, those handles. Don't pull too far out because you'll end up with a kind of impossible neckline. Um, so I'm just going to pull out to about there to make this nice curve. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom, only this time I need to pull to the left. Now the reason for that, oops a daisy, um, the reason for that, I'm holding the shift key again, is because the line is drawn in a single direction. Even though we didn't draw it that way, it was reflected and joined together, the, um, the path kind of flows in a particular direction. So if you can imagine, you pull that way um, for this point, and you pull that way and you pull that way and you always pull in the same direction so I'd pull downwards for this and then for this point I'd have to pull, pull to the left so that's why we pull to the right up here and to the left down here so sometimes it, you have to kind of make a, a guess at which direction the line's going to go in but if you pull in the wrong direction it will kind of tie it in a knot like this and all you have to do is flip it round and it will sort itself out. So don't worry too much if you do pull in the wrong direction, you just flip it, okay, by pulling in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's um, the basic shape of our T-shirt. Now what we need to do is we need to add some arms. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit the top part of our drawing. So I've used a magnify tool here. You can, you can either use your mouse to roll in and out if that's what you use. I use a trackpad, so I'm using a kind of pinching motion to zoom in and out on my trackpad. Um, whatever suits you, really. Okay, so I'm going to use the direct selection tool, and I'm going to click on this anchor that we put in the armhole here. Can you see this one? So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to copy that point. Now when we choose copy, what it will actually do is it won't just copy that anchor, it also copies um, the line segments that are associated with it. So it's going to take this line segment and this line segment, okay, up to these anchors and no further. 
So I go to edit and I choose copy. Okay, you can see the keyboard shortcut for this is Command or Control C, depending on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. And then we go to edit and paste in front and you can see the keyboard shortcut is Command or Control F. Okay, paste in front. So now what we've got is we've got an identical path exactly pasted on top of our original one, but it's not attached to the rest of the t-shirt. You can see nothing else on the t-shirt is selected. I've just got these three um, paths uh, or anchor points um, selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the pen tool. And if I hover over this anchor point, you can see um, I get um, like a, a little oblique line. Um, that's telling me that I'm going to continue drawing this path. So if I click there, and then I can come down to where I want my, um, my sleeve to end. So I'm gonna come across here. So I'm gonna draw down to this point here. Now I'm using the um, this kind of pink line to help me, because that's a, a, a guide for drawing a sleeve, a relatively slim fitting sleeve and I'm going to come straight across the arm. Now I'm keeping parallel. Now I see people all the time want to draw their sleeves like this. That's not what a sleeve looks like. Okay, so don't draw your, your or don't put your point down here. You're going to come across, straight across, like so. And then we can close the path. Now when we come up to close the path, you can see um, that the cursor, can you see we get this little circle? That's telling us it's going to close the path. Now, um, when we uh, are working in Illustrator, there are two kinds of path. Um, there is an open path, which is what we started with, okay? And then if we go all the way back to the beginning, um, we can close the path. Now, it's only closed paths that can have something called a fill. In other words, we can, we can now fill this with a color or a pattern or a texture, okay? When the path is open, um, we did have a fill um, applied to it. It was a white fill. That's this over here. You can see it says fill. And this is stroked. So that's the, the line that's going around the outside. I knew I was always going to close this path. So having a fill on it wasn't a big problem. But if you leave um, intentionally open paths filled, it can cause all sorts of issues. You'll see that as we go through. Um, this exercise. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to finish this um, sleeve off. I'm not going to put this sleeve in just yet until I've finished this one off and I'm going to finish it off with a little stitch line. Okay, uh, now I could just draw with the pencil, I could just draw a stitch line straight across like so, hit return, and then we can go to the stroke panel and I can change my line weight. Now I like my, um, my stitch lines to be quite fine, so I'm going down to 0.25 point, okay? I'm leaving my caps and my corners rounded and I'm going to add a dashed line. And my dash is going to be one point. Now, usually the default is about 12 points. So just change it down to one point. And I like to use um, this here, which is where it aligns the dashes to the corners and path ends. Um, it just gives a really nice, neat look. So I generally use that all the time um, for stitch lines, simple stitch lines. Okay. So there's my, um, my little stitch line. Um, I could have copied this line here and in the written tutorial, that's what I do, but it's entirely up to you um, what you do. You will guarantee having it parallel if you copy this line. Um, this is um, uh, working on a little bit of guesstimation, um, but it doesn't matter too much. So now I've got my sleeve complete. So what I'm going to do is using the selection tool, I'm going to uh, select the stitch line, hold the shift key down and click on the sleeve. 
So I've got the stitch and the sleeve selected. Okay. And then if I wanted to, I could group them together. Um, so I can right click and choose group. And then I can use the reflect tool again. And once again, I'm going to position my cursor exactly on that center blue line. Hold the Alt key again. So we've done this before and click. And once again, we're going to reflect across the vertical axis and choose copy. And that saves us the job of having to draw the sleeve for a second time and trying to get it exactly the same. OK, so I've got two identical um, sleeves. Now we're going to add a stitch line onto the bottom of the garment. So I'm just going to zoom in down here and I'm going to use the direct selection tool again. Click on this anchor point and we're going to go to edit and copy and edit and paste in front. OK, and then I can just nudge that up. I think probably two or three little nudges on my cursor keys. And then I'm not going to. Um, in fact, I just need to double check something because. I've got um, fills on these stitch lines, so I'm just going to remove those fills. So I've selected this stitch line and where I've got a white fill here, I'm going to choose none. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I should have done that before I um, copied this uh, reflected the sleeve over. So now with this stitch line, I don't need to do that again. I've got something called an eyedropper tool. Keyboard shortcut for this is a nice memorable one. It's the letter I. Um, so you can just hit I on your keyboard and then I can use the eyedropper and click on one of the, um, the stitch lines I've already made and it will apply that down here. OK, so that's exactly the same. So I've put a little stitch line along the bottom of my T-shirt. Now, this is OK because it's a relatively shallow curve um, and the fact that they're not absolutely parallel um, doesn't really show up too much. But when we come to do the neckline, that is going to show up um, quite a lot. OK. So now we've come up to the neckline or we've turned our um, attentions to this neckline. It's traditional to show the back of the garment, okay? And we normally fill this area in, in a light gray. So I need to draw this shape in here so we've got a representation of the back of the garment. And to do this, I'm going to use the direct selection tool. We'll put the stitch line in last, I think. So I've just clicked on this point here and I'm going to copy this line. OK, so I've just clicked on this point. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste in front twice. OK, so I've pasted in front once. You can see it's here. Now it's got a white fill on it. Now I'm going to just change the colour of the fill just for a moment so you can see what that looks like. OK, so that's what that fill actually looks like. I'm just going to undo that. Um, I don't care that it's got a fill because this is going to be um, a, a, a closed path soon. But I need to copy and paste uh, or I just need to paste in front a second time. OK, so I've done that twice. Now that means that I've got my original path and then I've got two identical paths sitting on top of it. OK, now I don't want to get my original path, which is part of the T-shirt body, um, uh, mixed up with this. So I've just selected it and I'm going to lock that into place. So the best way to lock this is go to object and choose lock and selection. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is command or control two. OK, so that looks like it's been dropped, but it hasn't. It's actually locked down. So I can't inadvertently pick that up anymore, but I can still pick up this, these paths. All right. Now, in order to pick up the two points that I want to join, I'm going to click and drag using the, the direct selection tool 
across these ends here. So it's where those two ends meet, okay, like so. And then I'm going to um, right click and choose join, okay. And then I'm going to go to the other end and I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. So I'm dragging across those two points and then right click and choose join again. Then I'm going to deselect and then reselect this point in the center and I'm going to just nudge that point up to about there. And then, as I say, the traditional thing to do with this is to fill that with grey. So I'm just going to go to my fill colour. I'm going to double tap on here and I'm going to choose where it says CMYK here. I'm going to make it 30% black. Um, K represents black. It stands for key and it comes from key plate, which is um, a term used in the printing industry. So I've made it 30% black and that represents the back of my t-shirt. Now I'm going to finish this off with a stitch line around the neck. Okay, now this is a little bit more tricky um, than the previous stitch lines um, because we need to keep the line parallel. So I'm going to just click on this path um, and then um, actually, I need to unlock the main body of my t-shirt, so I'm going to choose unlock all. Alright, and now I'm going to um, copy this path. It doesn't matter whether I, or not I copy it off this little crescent um, or I copy it off the main um, body of the t-shirt because the path is identical pretty much. So I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to um, paste in front again. Now you can see this time we've got this um, grey fill in here. Um, I'm going to take that fill off like so and I'm going to go to object and choose path and I'm going to use something called offset path. Now you can see I've got an offset here of one millimetre. That's probably about right. It sounds very small, but um, it's, it's all to do with the scale of the drawing. Um, so I've got a one millimetre um, offset um, and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for this. So I'm not going to go near the tool panel. I'm just going to tap I on my keyboard and then click on that little dotted path. Now you can see I've got um, stitch lines where I don't want them. So what I'm going to do is use the direct selection tool and I'm going to click the bits that I don't want. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to click each point in turn. Now don't rush this because you can see in between times all the points are selected. So if I were to hit um, backspace or delete again, um, it would delete the entire thing. So I just need to select each point in turn. Okay. I don't need that either, so I've just got rid of that path. Now you can see it's a little too long here, so I'm going to just shorten that down um, a tiny bit. So I'm going to zoom right in. It's always a good idea when you're drawing, if, you, if you're nervous about where things begin and end, um, you can always um, just zoom in and get a better look. Now I could pick this up and move it, but that's going to change the shape of the line. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the scissors tool. Now the scissors tool live here. This is the eraser tool. And if you click and hold the eraser tool down, you'll see the scissors tool. Now the scissors tool has a keyboard shortcut of C, which makes sense because scissors cut. Okay, so I'm just going to position my scissors just there and just snip off the end of that path. 
like so for a nice neat finish. And I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. And I'm back, I'm, I'm hitting backspace twice because one will get rid of the line segment and the second um, time you hit backspace, it gets rid of that anchor point, okay? And that gives us a beautifully parallel stitch line, okay? So I've now got a nice parallel stitch line around the neck and I've got stitch lines around the sleeves and our drawing is almost finished, okay? When we draw a flat, they're usually finished off with a kind of thicker outline, uh, outline to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the layers panel. So here's my template layer and here's my layer one. Now the easiest way to do this is create a new layer. So I'm just going to uh, click this little icon here where it says create new layer. And this time my layer is going to be green. So everything we've drawn so far has been on this layer, layer one, which is blue. And I'm going to change this layer, uh, um, I'm going to change its name to outline, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all. Now you must remember to unlock anything. So if you've got things locked down at this point, you need to make sure that you've unlocked them. And you can see um, everything is here on this blue layer and it's represented by this little blue light, okay? On the, on the layer panel, you can see this little blue dot here. That indicates all the selected artwork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this selected artwork by dragging this blue light up onto my outline layer, but I'm gonna do it while I'm holding the shift key down. Now that will allow me to copy, okay? So I'm not just moving, um, something from one layer to another. I'm actually making a fresh copy. So I've now got oops, let go before I should have done. So I'm going to drag that from there to there and hold the oh, hold the alt key, beg your pardon. So I've now got um a t-shirt on layer one, which is what you can see here. And you can also see I've got a t-shirt on the outline layer. Now I'm gonna hide, so I've toggled the visibility of layer one. So that's not gonna get mixed up with what I'm about to do next, because the next bit is a little bit brutal. Um, so on the outline layer, so make sure you've got the outline layer selected, use the direct selection tool and click on things like all the stitch lines. Okay, so I'm clicking on each one and hitting backspace twice. One, two, and then again on, oops, missed. One, two, and all I've got left now is all these shapes that make up the T-shirt. And what I'm gonna do is use the selection tool and I'm going to select um, a couple of those shapes. I'm going to use something called the Pathfinder tool. Now my Pathfinder um, panel isn't open at this point, so I'm going to go to Window and choose Pathfinder. And I can just drag this down and pop it where I want it. I can close the rest. Okay, so this is my Pathfinder panel. And I've selected the sleeve and I've held the shift key down to select the bodice. So I've got two things selected and I'm going to use this one on the shape modes. This is called Unite. Okay, and you can see it's joined those two shapes together. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other sleeve. And then finally, the little crescent in the neckline, like so. So I've got this kind of shape, outline shape of the t-shirt. And then I'm going to go to my stroke panel and I'm gonna make the line weight three point, okay? Now I like my outline um, to sit behind um, my drawing. Some people like them on top so they don't make them quite so thick, um, but I, I think that's a little bit clumsy. 
I like mine to sit behind, so I'm just going to drag my outline layer so it sits below layer one, and then I'm going to toggle the visibility of layer one back on. So there's my t-shirt, and that's the t-shirt finish. So all I need to do is just hide the, the, the template, and there is the finished t-shirt. Um, in future workshops, we're going to be looking at adding more shape, we're going to be adding um, shadows um, and all sorts of good stuff like buttons and plackets and collars and we're going to be drawing trousers and jackets. So stay tuned.